good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. Today, we're going to be looking at Caseware Working Papers 2023. It'll be myself and my colleague Yanni presenting today. So myself, I am Georgina Apfield, and I'm one of the education and media technicians here at Caseware. And then we've got Yanni Comrady, who is the product manager for Working Papers and IXBRL. So if you've got any questions at all throughout the webinar today, then please do pop them into the Q&A field at the bottom of the Zoom panel, and we will look to include a Q&A session at the end of today's webinar. So the agenda then. So I'm going to hand over to Yanni at this point. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Working Papers webinar for Working Papers 23. Looking at the agenda, I'm going to talk about, you know, upgrading to Working Papers 23, what you need to do and how to get there. We're going to look at some new features, some bug fixes, um, and then I'm going to hand back to Georgie, which is going to take you through some useful hints and tips of Working Papers, and then Q&A session at the end. Okay, um, first up, let's start with a poll. Georgie, can you run the poll, please? So I'm asking this question every year. Um, when do you upgrade to the new Working Papers version? Fairly consistent with what we thought it is. So beginning of the new year in quarter one. Excellent, Georgie. Thank you so much. Um, and now let's do a second poll. Now, a little bit different than the first poll, but when is the best time for you or your firm to do the conversion to the newest working papers. Excellent. Okay, I am going to stop the poll there. And yeah, we can see it is quarter one, followed by quarter four. So I think what we have done for the last few years is the release in December. Some of your clients jump on it straight away and then Q1. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that. Let's now continue with the actual Webinar. So, okay, so we're going to talk about Working Base 2023, uh, the release number four, that is 00.135R2. And then also we've released the template bundle with that. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So, T0143. If we look at the timeline of what happened to the uh, um, up to the release of Working Papers, we had quite a quiet period of all our EPACs. And then all of a sudden we had a rush of EPACs and list the latest one for corporation tax, um, CT 31504R1 was released just before well, beginning of October. And then beginning of November, we had our Charities Academies EPAC. Then we released our last corporate EPAC, EP4704. Um, then we had a hotfix for 40704. And then we released Working Papers 23 with T0143, the template bundle. Looking ahead, what's coming up is we've got EP4801, our corporate EPAC, followed by actually that has changed in the last couple of days. We are bringing out the corporation EPAC first. So CD4801 will be before the corporation and then EP4801 will follow that. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this and we still have clients that is not doing this right if we go back to the previous screen, okay, so if we take the EP4704, for example, um, that is the fourth EPAC in that series for the year. And the newest one you can see after we released working papers, we like it's a number reset, so 4801. Now, going back to four, if you're not up to date with the last EPAC of the year, so in this case, 4704, you should not install 4801. If you're, let's for argument's sake, say your last EPAC that you've done is 40701, you have to be up to date to with 40704 before you can install 40801. Um, if you if you jump straight from 40701 to 40801, you're going to miss all the updates that we've done in that. And that is the reason why we released the template bundle as well. So basically, if you're not sure, if you're up to date, you can reinstall the template bundle. It will bring everything up to date for you. And then you can just continue as we left off. So we do have a few clients that does it that way. Um, that's why it's there. If you're still unsure, you can always just call support and they can have a look and work with you on that. 
Now on the release itself of working papers. So when you do install working papers, um, what I want to point out is the release documentation. Now it's a couple of years now we we don't send out PDFs anymore. For the release, it's all on our help site. So clicking on the view release documentation, you will see that there is a section for working papers. So all your installation notes are there. Um, if you're making use of the data administration tool, that's the information about your electronic licensing, if that's applicable to you. Um, other upgrade considerations that you need to do. And then some, you know, the new features guide. Now that links is live. So if we update our documentation, it will just go straight into that area. Then right underneath working paper section is our getting started user guides from our EMT team. Now it is quite interactive as it is saying there, I mean, working papers, but it's a good point if, if you use case where once a year, for instance, and you forgot how to do things or can't quite remember, please make use of those interactive guides. Um, there's, there's about account tax, accounts advance, IFRS 102, 101. So please make use of it. It's also a great um, starting point for new starters in your company. Um, you can guide them towards that. Or if you're the one that needs to train the new people in your company, it's a good place for you to go as well, just to top up your knowledge again and then give them all the knowledge. If we just look at the actual working papers side, I mean, there's the intro. It talks about setting up case where it talks about the admin tool. Um, it gives you an overview of working papers. But yeah, yeah. so please have a go. Um, any questions after that, you know, get in touch with us and we can see how we can help you. Okay. Um, Poll three, Georgie, please, can you run that? So when are you looking to convert to cloud accounting? Now it is coming. It is something you probably won't be able to avoid forever, but it is coming. And I just wanna put out the feelers here of how you feel at the moment about this. The reason why I'm asking this is because okay, we are gonna, we've got 105 for UK in the cloud and we are gonna launch 102 in the cloud later this year. I'll have a quick discussion on that at the end. Right, so let's share the results. Thank you so much. And interesting when Caseware forces me to, and then when AutoTag comes to the cloud. Okay, interesting, excellent, thank you. So yeah, we are gonna release cloud, but for the time being, we will support our desktop stall. Okay. Right, new working papers, okay, 23. So like the previous years, there's not a lot that went in into the new working papers. I think the biggest update for working papers and you know, your, your IT will be very happy about this is that we've updated the Chrome framework to the late to version 109 and that was quite out of date. So please don't ask me any questions. If there's IT people on the call, don't ask me any questions about that. But it is updated to 109. Um, another new feature on history and milestones is that they've added now a history event for manually relocking a previous locked down engagement file. So you can track that. So if you have locked your file, but someone manually goes and unlock it and then lock it again, you can track that now with a milestone. Right, on the interface, so this is more with our smart sync. If you're not using for our case with smart sync, then you're not going to know what we are talking about here. Um, so yeah, they've done a lot on the interface for that. Um, just pointing out here the smart sync server menu on the work papers file automatically hides now. Um, when you connect to a cloud site, they've improved the wording for the rename file, confirming a dialog that clarify that cloud integrated files can now be renamed. So it's a little bit more clear there. Print and save. So when you're exporting a case, you document that contains external documents, links, um, that external documents can now be read by a screen reader and the text can be copied and pasted. On fixes that we've done. So on compression, uh, previously files to special characters that are compressed, that is fixed, so that does it now. And then on the interface itself, you know, 
previously opening up an engagement file, you got messages like update balance sheet, account balances, and processing registration. That showed previously, it didn't do it. Now it is doing what it is showing. Um, there's some more fixes on SmartSync. Um, on templates, so now, you know, a, a script exceeding more than 20 characters blocked previously template updates. That is not the case anymore. A few more fixes on hybrid cloud. Um, I'm not going to read all of that through, but on our working papers documentation on the help side, you know, there's, there's a full article on all the fixes and all the bugs that they've done. Okay, uh, the last bit is the end of life for Working Papers 2022. So that is going to happen on the 31st of May 24. So we've been consistent with that for the last few years. So after the end of May, you can still use Working Papers 22, but all our EPACs after that will only be done for Working Papers 2023. So please, if you haven't upgraded yet, update as soon as you can. Okay, so poll four. Georgie, can you run that? So like I said, we are going to release Cloud 102 for the UK, um, beginning of May, am I supposed to say that? But it is being released with full tagging. So the tagging that you've got on our desktop will be the tagging, um, what you see. So we will, I don't want to talk too much about that because this webinar is about working papers and not uh, Cloud 102 and tagging. But if, you know, Will you would you be interested for our sales team to contact you for a demo on that? And I can see it is a close race, but we have yes, quite a lot. Okay, so um George, I think we can end and share the poll there. Yes, so the majority is saying yes. Okay, please, if that's the case, uh, leave your name and contact details in our question and answers area, and we will get back to you on that. And thanks for this. I think this is good. Yeah, get a demo done and you can see the cloud and be one of the first ones to use it. Right, Georgie, back to you. Perfect. Thank you. Right. Let me just share my screen. OK, so what I'm going to cover at this point is just a few hints and tips. Now, these have arisen from you know, um, training, client training sessions that we've had, the training consultant has been asked, um, and also support cases as well. So it's just a few that I'm going to run through. So the first one being the importing of journals. Now, some of you um, may not actually know that you can import journal entries, and I'd imagine this would be quite useful if you're you know, um, creating a consolidation, you can import eliminating journals. Um, likewise, if you've got adjusting journals in an Excel sheet that your clients provided you with, or actually you've worked through and you've done the, um, the basis of it in Excel, you can import them rather than having to type them in manually into Caseware. So I've just got an Excel sheet here Excuse me. Um, so I've got a couple of journals in here that I'm going to look to import. Um, so I'm going to close this off. And the import function is under engagement and imports Excel files. So this will look familiar to you. But the top option, components to import, we want to select adjusting journal entries. Bear with me. <clears throat> Apologies. So I'm going to select adjusting journal entries and I'm just going to browse to that document that is sitting on my desktop. Um, the same as if you're importing a TB, if you've got multiple worksheets in Excel and it's actually, you know, the second tab in the Excel that the journals are sitting on, then obviously you'd amend this accordingly. But for me, I'm just going to select next. OK, another window that will be familiar to you. So this is where we can tick to um, exclude rows. So obviously I've got some title title headers in there that we don't want to import. So just exclude those and click next. 
And here we can select what type of journal it is. So for me, it's normal adjusting, but obviously we've got the eliminating option there. If they were relating to prior year and they're actually prior year journals, obviously you can amend the date accordingly at this point. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just click next. And then we just need to label our headers, um, make case we're aware of what each column is. So for this one, it's going to be the entry number. We've got entry description. We've got the account number and then we've got the balance as well. And we can specify um, obviously debit credit field. So that's the debit. and the credit and we can go ahead and click next so no accounts have been modified so all of those nominals that um, have got postings to them already exist in my trial balance so i'm going to click next and import and what we'll see is the adjustments col column will be populated with those journal entries Perfect. And then what we can do as well, if we go to the adjusting entry screen, we would see a list of those journals. So we've got in there, we've got our description, we've got the nominal and we've got the amount. So, um, yeah, that's importing journals. Um, we have had that come up quite a few times. So I just wanted to run through that with you. Renaming a file is the next thing I'm going to run through. So it may be that you've created a caseware file and we are only human. So it may be a case of there is a typo in the name or you wish to amend it. Um, you know, you want to include the year end at the end um, so you can differentiate between the files on the network. Um, it's not a simple case of going via Windows Explorer and locating the file and actually renaming it that way because there's so many different components that make up that caseware file it does have to be done within caseware so once you um, open up caseware you do have to be outside of the file in order to do it so I've just opened up a new instance of caseware here and on the left hand side we've got the option to rename file you can obviously browse to the file that you wish to rename, um, pop your new name in there, and then um, you'll have the option. This will become available to rename the file. It'll go through a very quick process and then um, you'll have that renamed. Just bear in mind that if you then try to open it from the recent files list, it will um, obviously tell you that that file doesn't exist because it is looking for the old file name. So that's renaming a file. The next thing I just wanted to make you aware of as well is on the document manager, we've obviously got all of our um, specific case view documents. So we've got our leave, uh, leave schedules, we've got our wizard, we've got our accounts, etc. But the document manager can hold um, external documents. So if you've got a PDF of last year's financial statements that you wish to have in caseware so that you can sort of flick between um, and have that to hand and refer back to, you can obviously drag and drop that PDF document into the document manager. Same with Excel files. Word documents, etc. So I have just got one um, sitting on my desktop. Let me just grab that. So I have got a plant and machinery invoice here. So what I can do is just drag and drop that over into the location wherever you wish for that to sit. Um, it does give it the next name um, that it believes um, <laughs> is relevant. Uh, so obviously, what you can do is just re go on the properties and renumber that. Um, so and call that plant and machinery. And I, I definitely don't want a nail. Um, so I click OK to that. And that just sits there. Um, and obviously I can open that up um, and refer to that actually whilst in the caseware file itself. So you've got the drag and drop option available for PDF documents, Word documents, Excel um, documents, etc. 
So just wanted to make you aware of that. So the next thing I wanted to run through is annotation of lead schedules. So the lead schedules can be built in via the wizard um, in the engagement setup tab within start um, and they just sit on your document manager. Now what you can do is you can open up one of these lead schedules and you can actually go to the annotation and um, annotation column and you can right click and annotate. So if you want to just make a note on there for everybody to see, um, you can obviously add an annotation. Um, also, you've got this notes section at the bottom of the lead schedule as well. So you can type into this notes section with regards to that lead schedule and that will appear visible for everyone to see that accesses the client file. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. The last thing that I just wanted to run through then is showing and hiding of columns. Now, um, when you create a caseware file, you are presented with our default trial balance. Um, I presume that majority do strip that out and insert their own nominal um, structure with trial balance, etc. Not a problem at all, but I just wanted to show you how to show and hide these columns. Um, it may be that you've got um, budget columns, annotation columns, etc. that you just don't need to see. It makes you having to scroll sort of left and right to be able to see things easily. So what you can do is you can right click on the header itself and you get the option to hide it. If at a later stage you actually want that column to show, you can right click and select show and you can show it again. You've got a vast amount of columns that you can show, so it might be the other way, it might be something's missing that actually you would want to see. Um, so you can right click on any one of the headers at the top, show and select it from the list. You can also reorder columns as well. So it might be that you've got columns that you still want to have access to and refer to, but you might not necessarily want them at the beginning. Um, so you can reorder those to be at further along. Perfect. OK, so that's everything with regards to sort of hints and tips that I was going to cover. Um, what we'll do is we will now look to have a um, look at the Q&A section. I think Jan's been sort of monitoring that whilst I've been chatting. So, Jan, have we got anything Q&A wise that we can run through? You're muted, Jan. Oh, those famous words. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to use that. Yes. Um, I've answered most of the questions. Thanks. They um, okay. got back to people. There are two questions outstanding, which I will have to investigate and then come back to. And that was more around um, naming, renaming on cloud. You know, if you have to think up and you do a renaming exactly on that. So um, I'll get back to you on the questions. Furthermore, there is no other questions. I OK, see. I mean, what I'll look to do is I'll look to put a QA and a document together. So after the webinar today, I will run a report of the questions asked and we'll um, pop a Q&A document together and we will provide that along with the recording of today's webinar. Perfect. OK, in which case then, Jan, do you want to reshare the slides? Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> OK. All right, then. So with regards to upcoming webinars, you can take a look at those over on the event section of our page. Um, you can take a look at the agendas and obviously register for those. Um, and then if we move on to the next slide, so we've got LinkedIn and YouTube. So with our LinkedIn, it's the client services LinkedIn page and we post to that sort of two or three times a week. So feel free to head over there, give us a follow. We keep you updated with all the latest news going on and product releases. We do also have a YouTube channel as well. Um, so YouTube channel for client services, Caseware UK. So you can 
scribe over there and that's where we put um, copies of all our quick vids and bits and pieces like that. Also, as I mentioned, today's webinar has been recorded. So a copy of the recording will be placed onto the YouTube. We will also place a copy onto the help site as well. We understand that there are certain restrictions sometimes um, with YouTube um, at firms. So we will place that onto our help site and um, feel free to catch up on that, share it with colleagues. Perfect. OK, so that's everything for today. Thank you very much for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all. See you next year.